again, a couple of excellent songs out there, but then you also got inspired to uh, record some of the bosses. So I was born in Jersey, so I still got the Jersey thing going on, all right? But, all right. but the little town I grew up in, uh, and I went through grammar school there, great school, uh, good people in the town, you know, we had, had a good, ch wonderful childhood. I was on the Jersey Shore, we had an amusement park, we had a beach, we had a creek, we had we had it all, everything. And uh, and plus we had 10 TV channels from New York City. I mean, I thought everybody Ooh, had that, wow. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought everybody had that. I came south and it was three. I went, three, what? that's right. Especially the land area. Yeah, so anyway, but my town, my little town uh, didn't have a high school. Yeah. And what they were doing, they were shipping people to other schools. They said, well, we're going to send you to a private school, to a military school. I'm going, what? <laughs> and I freaked out because my mom, my mom and I had been to Georgia uh, for, to visit relatives. Her mom, mother and my aunts. I mean, I had cousins. I had a whole flock of, of relatives. So we came down to Atlanta in 66 to visit, and I fell in love with the place. I fell in love with the South as, a, as sure I was 12 years old. Yeah. And so when they told me, we got back home and right in the fall my eighth grade they said well you know next year we really need to send you somewhere because you know we don't want you busting to the school and I that, but they mentioned them I think they mentioned military school and I freaked out you know so I ran out of the house for like an hour and went hung out <laughs> at, at some little fort that I'd made I would have to I was freaking out I was going sure. what you know yeah and then and and then a brainstorm came across across and I you know it, I, and I thought about Atlanta because I, I really loved Atlanta and I thought well, you know for some reason I'm never going to get back there but I loved it mm hmm and it was, you know, in 1966, things were, it was a big, small town at the time. Yeah, yeah. So I went back to the house, and I thought, I'm going to ask them if they'll, they'll, maybe they'll send me to Atlanta. Knowing it was never going to happen. <laughs> it was not going to happen. I knew uh, this. Uh, I'm just, I'm going to tell them that. Yeah. And I went back, I said, look, I said, uh, I, I, and I told them, I mean, I was 13 years old by this time, you know. And I told them, I said, yeah, I said, I get it. I get what you're trying to do. Yeah. I get it. You yeah. know that's okay. cool. Well, that's... You know, and I, I and I told them that. But I said, but can you send me to Atlanta? You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm knowing that it was just gonna not gonna happen. And they go, hmm, yeah. <laughs> I know we're getting to the Springsteen thing. I swear we're getting. <laughs> I know. I promise. Okay. What happened? My junior year. I'm in the South, and I'm in the music. I'm, I'm walking around at 15 years old with Otis Redding and James Brown albums and yeah. and all this Good great show. music. I mean, all this. I mean, just, I was eat up with all this great music in the South. And I saw the Allman Brothers band that were playing free concerts in the park, and these guys. And I was I was watching them. I was going, oh, oh man. Well, anyway, they finally did a concert in the Atlanta Municipal Auditorium in seven, January of '71, and I went to this concert and. You know, and I was, I would love the music. I mean, there was, they had, they were playing guitars, man, and they were rocking. It was just, it was killer. It was the original Allman Brothers band. Well, I stood about eight feet, I stood about eight feet from Dwayne Allman. Okay. And I stood there for about two hours, just watching him play, just right here between me and that, and the camera right here. I mean, about yeah. that far. Yeah. And I'd never seen anybody play. I've been playing guitar since I was nine, and I'm 17 here. Mm. I'd never seen anybody play guitar like that. I was mesmerized. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I went out, I came out of that room different than I went in, you know. Yeah. And the reason was, I, he was, he didn't screw around with the crowd. He didn't make any funny faces. He didn't, you know, do stupid stuff with, you know, he wasn't trying to entertain anybody like with, with Schmaltz and all this other stuff. It was like, he did, I don't even think he looked, I don't think that he looked down out of the crowd. Yeah. He, yeah. he talked a couple of times and he talked in the mic and announced the song and, yeah. But it was nothing but music. And that was kind it, of his style too. Wasn't it? It, but it was all, and the band was glued on him. I mean, he just led. It was his band, and he led it. You know, yeah. and he and he, but not in a malicious, egotistical way. He just played, and they followed him, and it was it was just like nothing you'd ever seen. And I went out of there. I was going, "What is going on?" You know, so. Right after that, I'm starting to like, now I'm listening to the records and I'm trying to cop the licks and I'm like going, oh my God, this is crazy. That's why I, I picked up a, a bottle and started playing, slot, tried trying to play slot guitar. And, and just, I'm going, man, I gotta, I gotta, you know, get into this, you know. Okay, so fast forward a couple of months uh, from January of 71 to uh, March. And I was going home for spring break from, uh, from Georgia to New Jersey and, and it's spring break in Georgia in March, but it's not spring 
in Jersey. You, you get there, there's, there, was right. two, there was a foot and a half of snow on the snow. ground. So, like so anyway, my dad and I are, um, I'm going to go to college there the next year. So my dad and I go to this college, uh, community college, and we're walking around. Uh, he had taken some courses there, and so he wanted to show me the college, and it was really cool. And I'm walking around, and I saw a bulletin board that had a flyer on it. I reckon, and, I, and from a distance, I could tell it was the Allman Brothers band pick. And I ran over, and I got this flyer, and I went, oh, man. And they were coming through New Jersey the next Saturday night. And I thought, okay, I want to go. And uh, went home, and I called the concert hall where they were going to be in Asbury Park. And the guy said, and I said, I need two tickets for the Allman Brothers band. And he says, oh, man, you won't have any trouble. Nobody knows who they are. And I go, well, I, I know who they are. And I just saw, saw them sell out the auditorium in Atlanta, so I, I, I'm going to reserve it. But I didn't need to because I was sitting on the front on the floor. Well, this guy was opening up named Bruce Springsteen. And, and, it, and he was this crazy guy playing guitar with long hair, just rocking, rocking the house, along with Southside Johnny, who's still out there doing great. And they were just rocking the house. And I knew this guy was special from some, some reason or another. And but then I saw the brothers do the first show, and I had to fly back to Atlanta the next day, so I couldn't stay for the second show. But I, 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 I was 17, and I drove home, and next day I went back to Georgia, and I was excited to have seen the brothers again within two months. But also this guy Springsteen was kind of like, I'm going, well, you know that something's going to be special about him. I don't know what, but something is. Yeah. So uh, then a uh, year later or so like that, I'm, uh, I, I got to see the brothers again. Uh, in the summer, a friend of mine was having a wedding in Atlanta, and I went back down with him during the summer, uh, my, uh, before my senior year. And then that October, uh, my senior year, I was drum major of the Woodward Academy Band, and I remember I was conducting a the Star Spangled Banner on the on a football field the night that Dwayne Allman had his motorcycle accident and oh, passed away. Yeah. And it was kind of like a JFK moment. You know, I, I never forgot it, but I'd already been bearing down on the music, and so I was really. Uh, heartbroken about that as many were and still are yes so uh that's how the the, the, the music you know and then, and then uh but i knew that i was gonna be playing guitar uh when, when i left after graduation i walked out of woodward academy with my guitar and you know it's been with me ever since uh and then i came uh, i was home a year and found uh i got was going to college and a couple of guys we, that i met we got a band together and we're playing you know in the area in Jersey, and uh, which Bruce would be playing around. I went to see one of his own concerts, and like for five or like for two dollars or fifty cents, got to see you know one of his shows. <laughs> and then he was playing schools. I and, saw the animals for that amount. Yeah, <laughs> that, I remember that show. That was probably back in '66, the same year I was here. That yeah. was with Herman's Hermits too, right? Yeah, at the, yeah. At the auditorium, yeah. Uh -huh. And my cousin went to that. I was, I, I was twelve, you know. <laughs> so they, but my cousin went to it, and yeah, I, I, so I remember the show. But anyway, um, yeah. it's just it. it uh, we, me and the guys in the band, uh, wanted to start playing playing some schools. So we went, you know, some high schools, and we did a couple of dances. And we went over to Christian Brothers Academy, went inside there, and talked to the lady, and said, "Oh yeah, we'd like to play. You know, we'd like to play for the the, the students at one of their dances." And I go, and she's real nice, and she says, "Oh, well, I think uh, they may have already found somebody, but let me check." And she goes in the back, and she pulls this big poster out. There's Bruce Springsteen that's playing <laughs> Christian Brothers Academy right up the street from the college, you know. We got and so I said, well, that, that's okay. You know, uh, he's already got the he's already got the gig, and we won't we won't try to take it away from him. But now, but the thing about Bruce now, uh, okay. So I'm uh, since that time, he got signed by Columbia Records, and uh, he he'd quit playing with his band. And he wanted to write songs, and he started going out as a solo artist, playing acoustic guitar and writing songs. That's what he wanted to do, mm -hmm. because he, the bar thing, he had already had ten years of bar experience playing, you know, playing in front of crowds, man. And uh, so he's going to the Greenwich Village, and he's playing uh, folk music, or, or like he, he's he's not he's got the image of a folk singer, but he's writing songs. Mm -hmm. And so then uh, he gets signed by Columbia Records on what he'd been doing like a couple of months, as opposed to ten years, and he gets signed by John Hammond at Columbia Records, and and they signed him as a solo artist, which is not what he wanted to be, but he got signed on his songs. Mm -hmm. And so the E Street Band builds builds up around the songs, and uh, that's how that, that happened. But then jump ahead to 1975, I'm back in Atlanta full-time. I'm teaching guitar lessons, playing in a band. I'm just, you know, doing some broadcast. And, and Bruce comes to Atlanta after Born to Run comes out. So Born to Run uh, was just hit... Hit, and it wasn't too long after that that he was featured on Newsweek and Time magazine, and uh, 
I think he had, yeah, and he had, he also tried to run over. Uh, he tried to jump over the fence at Graceland to go see Elvis, and, you know, to meet him, and he got tackled and then taken back out. And, and he goes, he goes, man, I'm on the I'm on the cover of Newsweek, and, the, and his bodyguard, Elvis bodyguard, goes, yeah, I'm I'm Santa Claus too, you know, throws him out of the place. Yeah, but Bruce came to Atlanta, and uh, he was playing the Electric Ballroom, Alex Cooley's Ballroom, for two nights, and I and I was writing for a little newspaper, a little doing some music reviews and. One guy had gone there on, on the one night, and uh, they were letting me go in the next night to, to write a review on the, on the show. And uh, so I, I went in there, and the guy from the paper was telling me, he says, man, the show's unbelievable. It's un I've never seen anything like it in my life. It's unbelievable. I went, cool. So I went down there, and uh, I went in to the dressing room, and I'm going I'm, I'm going to the dressing room, and I had to go through his manager, and his manager didn't like me at all, at, you know, but... But he, he said, "Yeah, all right, go on." You know, and I went downstairs, and Bruce is by himself, sitting there tuning the guitar. And I'm, and he, and he wasn't really. And I asked him, I said, "Bruce, I said, I'm, I said, man, I'm from right up the road from you. I'm from Kingsburg." And he's going, "Oh, cool," you know. But, but he couldn't talk, and he, I, he says, "Well, I really can't talk. I'm tuning my guitar." And I understood that, you know, and I understand it even more now. <laughs> but, on. but, but I, I just kind of said, "Well, I'm not, you know, th thinking I'm not going to get a lot of information here." But I mentioned a few few people. I mentioned Brookdale College where I went. I mentioned the Sunshine Inn, Asbury Park, you know, all the places, Freehold, where he was from, yeah. uh, the school, this and that. He's going, oh yeah, 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 I know all those places. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, about, you know, it's very quiet, very, you know, withdrawn. It's right, right before the show. And uh, so I said, Bruce, I said, man, just congratulations on, you know, Born to Run and, you know, just, man, welcome to Atlanta and all that. And I'll see you upstairs, you know. He's going, yeah, okay. Oh, I mentioned the Student Prince was a, the club that he met Clarence Clemens at. Oh. And this was a club that many of my, my band friends did because Bruce had the house gig there and he had a night or two off and we went in between there and played the Student Prince okay. one time. Okay. And that was his main uh, gig at the, at the time. So anyway, okay. uh, he, the, I go upstairs, I'm standing by the stage and they come out and blew the doors off the place. I mean, it was mm. just, I was going, wow. You know, Stevie Van Sant was the guitar player, Clarence. I mean, the whole East, the original East Street band, man, it was all all right there. Yeah. And and uh, I, I was just knocked out. But but somewhere during that show, uh, Bruce decided that he mentioned the Student Prince. He's going, yeah, this is a song like, uh, you know, about uh, one tenth of the size of this place that we used to play called the Student Prince. You know, and then Bruce kind of looks over to me at the side of the stage and kind of goes, yeah, all right, you know. <laughs> I'm going. All right. Whoa! You know, it was it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, he'd already. So there he was, man. I mean, I knew he was going to do it, and he did it. You know. Cool. All right. The reason we we talked about all this because you, you mentioned the Boss CD, which yeah. is the one I did. Yeah. Uh, it, these are ten songs that just came out that I, uh, that really hit home for me, that he did. Mm -hmm. And I got to be friends with the guys on East Street Radio on the. Uh, Bruce talk show on Wednesday mornings. They do a talk show on uh, Channel 20 on on Sirius XM. Yeah. It's Jim Rotolo and Dave Marsh, who's a long time just a genius rock and roll writer. Uh, I, I'm not even going to say a critic, but it more or less analyzes stuff. Um, but he he wrote Cream Magazine was his was his baby back in the day. He wrote for Rolling Stone. I mean, he's just written books. He he wrote Br Bruce's first biography. You know, so he did all that. And I've got and I started talking to these guys on the phone on the air. Yeah. And they invited me up to the station last year, and I and then I actually cut a, a CD last year from my uh, hometown in Jersey called Memories of Kingsburg, New Jersey. And I'm using the postcard of the town that I grew up in, mm -hmm. similar to what Bruce did for Greetings from Asbury Park. Yes. But I didn't want to go, I'm not going to do the greetings thing, because he owns that, and I just did Memories of Kingsburg. And I wrote a bunch of songs about my town, mm -hmm. except for one Bruce song called My Hometown. And I, and I cut that on there, and they've been playing it on E Street Radio on, on that channel. And I thought, man, I would have a ball just doing some of Bruce's songs. So I cut this list, this CD, and it's it's out there now. It's called Roger Hurricane Wilson Covers the Boss. Ten songs. I recorded them all all myself, and I had a ball doing it. Whether or not it goes anywhere, it, it seems to be going yeah. a few places, yeah, sure. and it's getting some airplay. Sure. Yeah. But even if it didn't, I just had a ball doing it. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. great. And so that's that's just something that's kind of close to me. You know, figure that all the time I spent listening to the blues and the Allman Brothers Band and all these other places uh, or other other things you know um then i kind of revert back to the to the jersey thing but just because i was inspired to do it you know you know so 
that's that's awesome. that that's that chapter anyway. <laughs> that's very good. Very good.